Imagine moving to New York with copious amounts of dreams, dreams to pursue fashion, and make it in the industry. You get connected to the likes of Lucas Sabat, Ass Pizza, and Kerwin Frost the second you get there. You get a massive following on Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter. Then you get connected to the Ogway Collective and ASAP Mob, and you're eventually featured in a ASAP Mob music video. With the ASAP Mob ties, you eventually get to the point where you are managing Cash Cardi, now known as Playboy Cardi. You eventually model in Yeezy Season 3, and you create multiple fashion brands to kind of upstart your career. You're in the presence of the likes of Virgil Abloh and Kanye West. You think this person would be on top of the fashion world. Well, let's meet Ian Connor. Ian Connor, where do I begin? I have such an interesting parasocial relationship with this man. And today I want to talk about what went right in Ian Connor's career, what went wrong in Ian Connor's career, and where I see him kind of developing in the next five years. It's kind of like a fashion staple in this industry. I wanted to make this video with the Molola video I made, so please check that out before you end up watching this video. Connor was such a interesting figure in the mid to late 2010s streetwear scene, especially in New York. I can't seem to kind of place where I first figured out about Ian Connor, but it was somewhere in between his Instagram post and a No Jumper interview he did uh, when No Jumper was like the leading source of like underground rap and stuff. There was at one point too where I was so obsessed with the Virgil Abloh that anyone that he was surrounded with, I would also follow. I was obsessed with this Caravaggio hoodie and I wanted it so, so bad. I eventually got scammed over it, which is crazy to do. As a 16 year old, I was getting scammed left and right for off white stuff. Absolutely crazy. That damn Caravaggio hoodie, the time you've wasted in my life trying to PayPal dispute shit. Ugh. But once I found Connor, I became enthralled with his kind of internet per personality. The Ian Connor's revenge. The fits he would post, the people he would be around. I wanted his life. I genuinely was like, I need to know how to be him. It just, how he portrayed it on Instagram. It was really one of those situations where what he portrayed, I wanted. And there was a lot of like motivation and jealousy of this lifestyle he's probably one of the first people in the streetwear realm that had this kind of aura about him he had this aesthetic that so many people especially my age high school time were just so enthralled and so mesmerized by it, it even got to a point where i bought a jersey of him with his face on it and it was just a repeated pattern of his face on it, it was in collaboration with will fry and i was like i'm buying this so if I am ever anywhere near him, he can see this, I support him, and maybe he shouts me out. I was like, I needed to have his life. And you could tell, there's so many backstories with Connor, but you could tell that he was just really great at networking. He knew so many people in the scene. He was very connected to the likes of Lucas Sabat, ASAP Mob, and that helped him climb this fashion industry pretty fast. I would see Connor with the likes of a lot of underground artists, especially D. Savage. During that era, D. Savage had that I Know snippet that everyone loved. Others like Doo Wop Kane and Playboy Cardi, who was underground at one point. And he wasn't that controversial of a figure. There was only one time that I remember. It was when he was supposed to do a collaboration with Pink Dolphin. And the Pink Dolphin owner was pretty much like, yo, this guy really doesn't know anything about like the like textiles you use, how to make clothes. He kind of is just like an aesthetically put together person and having a conversation with him about trying to make clothes was just like super hard to do. And it was a horrible experience. And he pretty much just kind of like shit, shit on Ian Connor. But I was on Ian Connor's side. I was riding for him. I was like, there's no way this motherfucker's lying. Blah, 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 blah. And after that, you don't really hear a lot about him. I mean, you see him a lot with a bunch of different rappers and stuff. But not until we get to Paris Fashion Week in 2015, I believe. And right before this, there was a video clip that resurfaced of Ian Connor and Playboy Cardi and Kerwin Frost and Aspisa, who are also two like fashion kids in the New York scene. They are like doing this like tag team fight. And it's kind of the most hilarious fight ever. Playboy Cardi is kind of wailing on Kerwin Frost and then Aspisa is just kind of in the back like sitting back there kind of asking everyone to stop and Ian Connor's just egging it on. It was just a very wild fight and it just showed a little bit of a glimpse of like the personal lives of these like fashion kids. 
Right Use ass card. Go ahead. Go. There you go. Ask me to Watch out. Don't touch him. 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 Don't hit him. Yeah, don't touch him. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. What's up? What's up? I wasn't going to pick him no shit. I wasn't going to pick him And then there's a more serious fight. Twenty Paris Fashion Week about 2015-2016. Uh, R&B singer Thelopolis London. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. But he gets on Twitter and goes on this kind of tirade like, hey, I know uh, Connor, he kind of just essayed a bunch of women like in the double digits. And anyone's like, bet, like if, if you're going to say this stuff, let's fight about it. Because putting those allegations are very serious. And obviously we know like those can end careers if true. Uh, not Maybe not even if their allegations are true. And they go to the Colette store, which is now a closed down like clothing boutique. Uh, Virgil Abloh and ASAP Bari are having this like V loan off white event there, and it seemed like a pretty professional event. But Ian Connor, the second he sees Salopolis, just goes in there and starts wailing on him. And ASAP Bari is kind of playing security, and he's like, "Bro, do not like do this here. This is our moment." Like the Colette store was a really big boutique to even be in. So ASAP Bari, there's a video of him. He gets Ian Connor and Ian Connor and ASAP Bari just start fighting. And it's that's when it kind of goes a little bit downhill for Ian Connor. Then we have the infamous phrase, Ian Connor 33. And throughout this point, I'm going to go and delve into some a little bit more serious topics. So if you don't like uh, talking about like sexual violence or anything of that nature, you can click away from the video or I'll put a timestamp for when we skip that. So there are multiple sources of these allegations. So we have Thelopolis London. He said that he know, knew about like six to ten women that were like coming to him laying like, yeah, uh, your buddy Ian Connor, he did some crazy shit to me. Then we get Amber Rose coming out in like the in 2016, 2017 saying pretty much that like to the number of 20, 20 women have come up and told her or communicated to her like, yeah, he has done the same thing that like London was also talking about. And then you have two other people who have their own specific accounts. Uh, artist, Chicago artist John Doe, uh, she was a uh, Chicago R&B singer, and she came out and pretty much said all this happened. She, yeah, she was very much on the lines like this happened, this was a real thing, and the uh she pretty much said though that she didn't trust the police the police never worked for her so she never brought it to a police investigation there's also an emory student at the university of emory which is i think in georgia uh that came out and also said like this happened and she made a whole post saying everything and the police ended up saying that there wasn't enough evidence to charge connor so again these are all allegations i don't want to come on here and try to ruin anyone's career i just want to present what has been happening and it's really interesting to see how this has affected connor because he kind of takes the stance of like look like i have not been charged with anything besides like a gun charge so this didn't happen which like in the big two four if we're doing things like that like that's kind of wild because we can kind of use our critical thinking caps and be like okay we could come to a conclusion we obviously can't say this person is this because there is no charges and it's proven guilty but i kind of believe that if to the loads of 20 like that's that's crazy and i never want these things to be true because i never want anyone to go through that that's like a very serious thing that has a long lasting a life lasting effect on women so i always hope that these situations like oh it never happened da, 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 da. um and also believe that justice will always find its way even if you avoid allegations and you know live your life justice or revenge will uh come and bite you in the ass but again, those are just allegations. And you do see, which is kind of interesting how this plays out, because you do see a lot of people kind of fall off the Ian Connor uh, bandwagon, say, per se. And you start to see, like, the fashion side of him not be there. Like, he, I kind of see him more as, like, this aesthetic genius rather than, like, a fashion genius it boy, like... He's going to portray a certain life that a lot of people want, and that gains a big following, which is a talent in and of itself. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, 
but he doesn't really he can style really well he can he's in uh circles with a lot of famous uh creative people that have done really amazing things so uh he can portray this lifestyle portray this uh aura that he has and people will latch on to and people be like i want that i can do this too which is a lot of engagement and a lot of ways to sell clothes. And going off selling clothes, he launches his kind of first brand, which is Revenge Storm or Revenge X Storm. Like, who the fuck are you collaborating with? But the main focal point of this brand is a old school van with a lightning bolt on it, which, you know, there's there wasn't I don't think there was any lawsuit with it. But because uh, you can't really sue someone, but it just seemed like it, everyone was like, wait, I thought you were this like fashion genius but you just stuck a lightning bolt on a shoe like what are we doing here and then you're charging 250 dollars for it like that's wild i mean and they also garner a lot of attention and they also were selling at 2.5 times the price like the actual retail price so a lot of people wanted them and that's why i'm saying like ian connor's an aesthetic genius like people just wanted the shoe because they wanted to be ha like they wanted to wear something that Ian Connor made. So it sells a lot of clothes. Like you can portray this lifestyle, you portray this personality, persona you have. And people are like, oh, I want to align myself with that. Buy the shoes. Buy the $250 shoes. Buy. Spectacular. Give me 14 of them. And that's where I was getting at with my previous video uh, about starting like a streetwear brand. You have to have a certain ethos. You have to have a certain way of living and conducting yourself on social media. That's what's going to make people buy your clothes. I'll let you in Me personally, though, I never really liked the shoes. Like I said, you can kind of already tell. Like, they're just like old schools with a lightning bolt. And I was never in the position to be like, let me pay $250 for that type of shoe. And there was a couple different things with Connor uh, that came up. He was engaged to uh, a fashion designer, Raven Tracy. She has a store on Melrose. She had her own brand, and apparently that fell out. There was nothing I don't think ever happened there. It just got really messy on Twitter. But also at this time, he starts a brand with someone I think named T-Rex Global called it's Sicko. There's a lot of like one of one paintings like painted on stuff of like t-shirts and hoodies and i think that's really cool and a little bit more of like a a vibe and more creativity to it that people wanted but they did up the prices i mean these shirts were going from anywhere from like 150 to 400 dollars. but it's all one of one stuff so the price is going to go up on things like that but this is where you start to kind of get into the rage bait of his clothes it's a lot of like weird symbolism he uh, I think he is now Muslim and he has a lot, he had a lot of like posts and I don't even know if he did any clothes, but would put like Osamo Bin Laden's face on it, which like is just like 10 out of 10 rage bait. I just like, I'm not going to, I'm not even going to like try to like break down why that's bad. Like obviously like that's wild. And there was like other things where he put like Pokemon characters like on some sicko shirts and yeah, it just, there were some parts where I was like, oh, this is really cool. And then there's other parts where I'm like, this is just very much like, let me get likes. Let me get retweets. Let me get people to comment on it. It's like, dude, you're already doing that. With Sicko Brand, there, there's a lot of nihilistic and pessimistic energy in these clothes. And I think a lot of teenagers, a lot of teenage boys like to uh, wear that kind of stuff. They're kind of figuring out like, oh shit, this is the world. This is the world we live in. And I think it resonates with a lot of teenagers and young adults. And I can see why his demographic is like that 17 to 25 year old like range. And I think if he fosters that community more and like he's like tapped into what these kids listen to. Like I've seen him post with Brennan Jones and Skywater and Edward Skeletrix. Like he's very tapped in. And I think that's something if he builds that more can really be like a staple staple streetwear brand so what is ian connor up to now well if you watch the molo lola video you know that he is engaged to molo lola and helped her with her newest runway collection but in this video i want to focus more on what connor brings to that and what his past work in fashion has kind of brought to the table now i see some of his posts and they are kind of concerning with like the trump bullet hole hat i'm just like why like this is like this is 
fashion is always going to be political and you can't just like do stuff for like that kind of stuff for rage bait i'm like oh that's just kind of cringe and it's funny because i'm looking at like my 19 year old self i'm like hmm like i probably would have loved that if i when i was like 19 18 20 like so there's just a lot of kids that see that i'm like ugh. like trump is so objectively bad and then as I'm doing research for the Mola Lola video, I see that, you know, Ian Connor is talking about uh, this fashion writer and just saying blatantly homophobic, like, stuff. To and I'm like, okay, this is, like, fun and all, but, like, you're threatening people, like, the homophobia of it all, like, this is just kind of stupid. And you're working with Skywater, who is a trans woman. Oh my god. Like it like it just doesn't click like you you're doing this in all in a very disconcerted way. You wanna say these slurs and wear these, you know, Trump hats that someone made and I don't it's just like what is you it's you're trying to attract too many people to your idea. Like you want these homophobic, racist, um, or do you want like like who what is your demographic at this point you're just trying to attract every like teenage kid or something i don't it's just confusing to me but yeah they the homophobic serve came from i think a guy that is a fashion writer and he just said something negative about the molola collection which i'm like this collection is going to bring up a lot of feelings for a lot of people it was a very eye-catching collection so people are going to say crazy things and if you're going to do this rage bait stuff you can't get enraged yourself after someone's like falls for the bait like that's not how this works you can't go over and be like no you're wrong you need to you need to shut the fuck up you need it and it's like dude you did this for that reason like what's going on here you're missing the plot and i still think ian connor has a lot of potential if he can kind of gather in the sicko mo or if he can kind of gather the sicko brand and he can kind of elevate it and I think the Sicko brand has a lot of potential. If he can stop doing these like one of one pieces and start doing a little bit more collections, and maybe he does, I haven't looked too much into it. Um, after I saw like the homophobic stuff, I was like, okay, dude, I'm just gonna get off of this page. But I do see some really like solid pieces, like these jeans that he's about to drop or just dropped with a collab with AFB. I'm like, okay, like these are solid pieces, very like. Pharrell, Pharrell Williams inspired and it's just a solid pair of jeans that you could charge a decent amount for and I think they need to start doing things like that rather than these like one of one hand painted pieces and or maybe just have those on the side and you're doing collections maybe they are doing that but I think more things like that that are a little bit cheaper will allow more people to engage with your brand even you know more importantly because your brand is teenagers a lot of teenagers don't have four to five hundred dollars to spend on these clothes but yeah i think if he just does more collection based stuff i think he can really turn it around i mean with all the allegations and stuff and whether he's like a morally good person that will come to light if it does or not if he you know if he is like the out like it will all kind of cool down if it doesn't it will come out more and you know i don't want to say anything on that i'm not gonna I'm not going to play the guessing game on if someone's going to get, like, charged with a criminal. Like, that's just not this channel. I don't want to be some kind of drama channel like that. But, yeah, I think he can be someone like a Virgil Abloh if he creates this brand and does more collection-based stuff and steps away from, like, the very rage-baity stuff. And, I mean, if that's if that's his way of, exp like, expressing himself, like, obviously more be to you. But I think that doesn't elevate your brand or elevate elevate your ethos if you're doing a lot of like osama bin laden prints or a lot of just like weird like white live matters like drops to homeless people like what like i get it we can do what do you mean by that like rage bait can be fun but when your brand is 99 percent of that like it's just not, it's going to stall out somewhere. So I hope, hopefully he, you know, I wish success to everyone. I hope he, you know, can get his brand elevated more and it's a staple streetwear brand. But it's his vision. I would never understand it. So I'll be to him. Get with the vibes or die. You all have a good one.